What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about turbos, turbo manifolds, and everything in between. Let's do it. So this is a Pulsar GTX 3076. And now you may be thinking, GTX 3076, that sounds kind of familiar. Well, you may recognize that as the standard numbers for a Garrett Turbo. So yes, this is a replica Garrett turbocharger. Now, now you're probably saying, Sean, why did you get a rep turbo, why didn't you just get a Garrett or a Precision or a Borg One or something of like some actual quality? Well, I am not TJ Hunt. <laughs> I do not have TJ Hunt money. Um, this is a, a project that I am fully funding out of pocket. And um, yeah, I had to, there's places where I want to save a little bit of money and there's places where I obviously had to spend a lot of money to get parts and other things organized the way that I wanted it to. But Pulsar is pretty well known in terms of being pretty pretty good quality. Um, this turbo was about just over 700 bucks, um, whereas the like, equivalent Garrett turbo would have been 2,400, 2,500. So um, this is pretty strictly a uh, budgeting thing for me. now. You can't have a turbo without some way to get the exhaust gases out of your engine to your turbocharger. So, this, this little beauty right here, this is my black market fab equal length K24 rear wheel drive turbo manifold. Now, I'm gonna give you guys some product shots of this so you can see a little bit better like how good quality this thing is and how like this thing's gonna last this thing is gonna be super solid so from the title of this video you guys know that there's something wrong with this turbo this is not the right turbocharger for the setup that I need but there's something very specific about what's wrong with it the sizing of this turbo is pretty much exactly what I wanted either a precision 5858 or a Garrett GTX 3076. Has a really solid power band in the 400 to 450 wheel horsepower range, and so I think this thing was gonna work perfectly. The issue came in when I had, I've had this turbo just sitting here for months in this box. I was waiting for my manifold to get fabricated, and so when I ordered this turbo, I ordered it with a Garrett style V-band housing for the hot side inlet, which is basically, this is right going to mount onto where the turbo manifold exits. So all the exhaust gases come out of the engine through the runners and they collect here. And so this flange has to match this flange. The problem is that I had ordered this in the Garrett style. However, it came in what is called the tile style. Tile being a brand that makes waste gates, blow off valves, uh, these obviously flanges, uh, V-band connectors, lots of other things. but. I had my manifold uh, fabricator make this with the Garrett style V-band flange. So as you can see, it has this lip, has this raised section in the middle. So obviously this needs to have that, but it may kind of look like it does, but it doesn't. This does not fit. That means that my V-band clamp won't fully close on there. That also means that that's not going to be a perfect seal and I'll have a pretty good chance of having exhaust leaks there, which is not what you want when you're trying to make boost with a turbo. So I emailed Pulsar and I said, hey guys, I think I've got a problem. I took, I sent them a bunch of pictures of the flange on the manifold, the flange on the hot side of the turbo, and like basically listed out like, here was what I thought I was ordering, 
and here's what I actually need. And they basically came back with a response that said um, they were, they're in the process of converting all of their stainless steel uh, exhaust houses, or like hot side turbine housings, um, which is what I had ordered. I ordered the um, V-band stainless steel versus the carbon steel, which will develop some rust over time. Um, they're in the process of converting all of their stainless steels from the tile flange to the Garrett style flange. Um, so they actually have some of those in stock. So they said, we will send you the stainless steel Garrett flange style exhaust housing if you'll just take the one that you already have on there, box it back up and send it back to us, it'll be all good. So, I have the supposed stainless steel Garrett style flange exhaust housing. Um, and yes, it does fit, I've test fitted it. So today, effectively, what I'm gonna be doing is removing the tile flange exhaust housing and installing the Garrett style flange turbine housing. Let's get into it. All right, I tried to explain this on the other turbo, but I just couldn't get the right angle or the right light. So effectively, this is held on by these six bolts and it's the same on the actual turbo itself. And so there's these sort of sandwich plates here. There's two different pieces. They're in this sort of half moon shape. There's three here, or one here and one here. And so all I would really need to do is take out these six bolts from this guy, pull the old housing off, remove all this on here, bolt the new one on, and we should pretty much be good to go. Yeah, so it's just a 13 mil wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this one pulled off and make sure this works how I actually think it works. <laughs> and uh, then we'll go from there. They really cinched these things on here tight, which, I mean, makes sense because if the customer didn't do it before they put it on, you wanna basically cover, you know, CYA, cover your ass. And so, Pulsar doesn't want to be held responsible for, oh, I've got a turbo leak. Well, you didn't bolt these things down tight enough, so they went ahead and did it for you. Okay, so if you've ever heard of something called clocking your turbo, that effectively means that the two halves, the hot side and the cold side, can spin freely from each other. They're connected by the cartridge, the center cartridge, which has the you know connector shaft between the two blades. But those two pieces can spin independently of one another because of the fact that your turbo needs to be able to be mounted in multiple different configurations for all kinds of cars, trucks, and engines, basically. So when you loosen those six bolts and you, you well, you don't have to remove this, but once you get them loose, this side rotates this side pretty much rotates freely. So if I need to have the, the um, you know, my turbo manifold flange is, comes straight up and, and stops at the top. So this needs to be seated. Let's see if we can just hold this. So this needs to be seated nice and flat like this. But my compressor side, depending on where I want my intercooler piping to come out, the cold side needs to be configured in any kind of way, it's 360 degrees. So once this is mounted, this piece can spin wherever it needs to go. So all we're gonna do is pull out the remaining three bolts here, do the same on the Garrett style flange turbine housing. Now, this is gonna be a pretty easy one. Should. Ooh. Yo, so that is my hot side turbine. Looks like it's, ooh, what it gets hardened steel? I don't, I don't know the, the full conf the details around the materials and everything. I should, but I don't know them off the top of my head right now. But anyway, that's pretty sick. That's always nice to see. Awesome. Now I'll get this thing put back together and uh, we'll get the other one on. Right, so I just had the thought that now that since both of these um, 
turbine housings are free, I can actually show you what I mean by how uh, one of them didn't fit. So this has the little flange, right? This little lip on the flange on my manifold. And so this is the new one. So this has, see if it'll focus here. This has an extra lip cut into it around the center. So this, when I go to place this on here somewhat properly, zoom this in, this right here, because of the fact that those two surfaces, one has a raised section and one has a cut out section, this gap is nice and clean and my V-band clamp will close that and it'll seal and we won't have to worry about exhaust leaks. Now let me show you the one that I was using. So let's compare this way. So you can see how this one here has an extra rim cut out of it, whereas this one does not. And so when I try to go put this guy on here, somewhat aligned. So now with this one, you can see that there's a physical gap here. I can actually get my fingernail in there. It's probably about 50 or 60 thousandths of an inch open. And so that would give me a whole host of different issues. I wouldn't be making boost properly. I'd be searching around my exhaust system, trying to find where my leak is coming from. Um, I might like, is it my intercooler piping? Is it my exhaust piping? When in reality, it's just the seal between the turbo and the manifold. So, so now I'm gonna quit talking. We're gonna go ahead and get the new one put on there and uh, I'll see if I can't actually assemble it onto the engine to give you guys a little bit of a first look at what this engine's gonna look like. So let's finish this up. All right, now that's taken care of, I'm gonna see if I can't pull off this crusty old stock rusted over exhaust manifold and uh, we'll see if we can't slap on our shiny new turbo manifold with the turbo and get our first look at what this thing is gonna look like, hopefully, when it's done. crusty old exhaust flange from 20 years ago. This is just gonna get scrapped probably. I guess I'll leave the flange on there for now. I know for a fact I'm gonna need a new flange. I'm gonna get a new flange, don't worry guys. Right now I just wanna get it all put on, just gotta see what it looks like and then I'll take it off later. Damn boy. set this on the flange. All right, check this out. Yo, obviously still have all the stock accessories. Don't, don't look at the mess, all right? Just, just forget that's there. Obviously it still has all the stock accessories. I'm waiting on, I've been waiting on parts for freaking months to come in. But check this freaking turbo though, my guy. Oh, that's so sick. Oh, excuse the lighting, obviously. It's late now, but sheesh. So yeah, I'm gonna have my, you know, this is where my, my downpipe for my exhaust will come off of here. Below, all this will be gone, don't worry. This is gonna be much cleaner. Uh, this is the, my um, head cover is gonna be a different color. I'll let you guys guess in the comments what color that's gonna be, but anyway. So my, my downpipe comes off the turbo and then we'll, I'll, I'm gonna fabricate it so that it matches up with my uh, existing three inch cat back that goes out the back, back side of the exhaust. But I'll have to get, so this is my wastegate. This is a um, tile 44 millimeter wastegate. So, um, you know, once the, the downpipe comes off this way, this is gonna have to notch basically straight into that main pipe. So the pipe comes out here, this is gonna have to mate up with that. So I'll have to get like a tube notcher and then fab that. But that should be relatively simple because it's just like a little piece here. I'll probably get a little expansion piece, a little accordion thing, y'all know what that looks like. But, and obviously the turbo is not gonna be facing this way, it's probably gonna be facing down. But that's that clocking thing I was talking about earlier. So now the hot side's in place, I need to make sure the cold side is facing the right way. But yeah, one last look at this thing. Dude, that's gonna be so sick. This is gonna be black. I've got a new cover coming for it. I've got new pulleys, new uh, accessories, all that. Um, the new intake, the intake's gonna come off this way. So 
um, or sorry, the intake to the turbo obviously will come off here-ish somewhere. And then this is gonna be facing nose down. It's gonna feed to the front of my Mishimoto intercooler at the front of the car and then circle back around to the K-Power intake manifold, which again, is on the way. But look at how sick this thing is gonna be. God, I can see it. I can see it in my mind. I can tell that this thing's gonna look so freaking awesome inside the engine bay of the BRZ. Speaking of that, I gotta pull the stock engine out. Um, uh, stick around for that. So, to follow up with that, if you like this video, Hit that thumbs up down below. It really helps me out. It really helps the channel grow. I'm trying to get, you know, as big as I can before the end of the year. I want to like set a milestone, but the channel is so small, I don't even know what milestone to set. Anyway, if you want to follow the build, if you want to see more stuff like this, if you want to see more of me, or if you want to see more of my uh, sort of informational news, car talk, uh, sort of wheelhouse type content, subscribe to the channel. That's all you gotta do. Just click one button, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah, so like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you're new so you don't miss out on everything that's gonna be coming in the next couple of months. And until next time, build your dreams. This is gonna get much cleaner. This is gonna be a different. I'll worry about that later.